Using vectors is one of the great strengths in our collections of numbers. For example, here we can simply collect numbers using the C function, C, parentheses, and then listing numbers separated by commas, one, two, three, four, and you list those numbers. We can also generate a sequence of numbers from one to four by using the first number and the last number, and then I separate it by a colon. Here I also do it from five to two, going backwards, five, four, three, two. Here we can go from negative to positive, using a colon between negative four and positive three, and you have all the integers between four, negative four and three. We can also get a sequence of numbers by using the SEQ command, SEQ parentheses one to four, and you can also specify the step size in between the two boundary points. For example, if one boundary point is zero and the other is eight, but we want the step size to be two, we can go sequence from zero to eight by two. So you have zero, two, four, six, and eight. So generating sequences is one way to get a list of numbers. We are going to be able to use, of course, any list, one that we use from data or from some calculations, but sequences are often very useful, especially when we want to generate lists that we want to do example procedures with. Here we have a step size in a sequence between zero and one, but now we're going by a step size of 0.2, so you can have a decimal step size. So I'm going 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and one. So the sequence command is extremely useful for generating a sequence of numbers. However, we don't have to specify just the step size. We can also specify how many elements in the sequence we want. So if we want to go from zero to one and have 11 elements in the sequence, well, well, we just simply specify the length of 11 and it divides up the numbers between zero and one into 11 spots. Here we've also done the same thing with three spots, a length of three. The sequence has three elements, 0 0.5 and one. So we're going to find that the sequence command is exceptionally useful for generating these numbers when we need them in many situations. Here we have zero to one with a length of five, so it generates five numbers between zero and one. 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and one. Now let's use a collection again using the C function. Collection, paren C comma, Z, C parenthesis one, two, three, four, and parenthesis, and multiply that times two, and what do we get? Well, every element in the collection was multiplied by two. So you can do arithmetic operations with R uh, with collections or vectors. In this case, we're going to take the same collection of numbers, and they don't have to be in order like a sequence. They can just be any numbers. Here they are in order, one, two, three, four. But now I'm gonna divide each element in the collection by another collection. So I could have divided them all by a number, a scalar, but I can also divide them all by individual numbers. In this case, I'm gonna divide the first element in the first one by the first element in the second one. So we have one divided by two, giving you one half, and two divided by two, giving you one, and so on. Now, in this case, I'm going to take the log of a collection of numbers. So you can do not just arithmetic operations with sequences or collections, but you can also uh, I do other more advanced functions. In this case, I specified here that the base for the log was gonna be base 10. I did not use the B equals or the base equals. Just having the 10 by itself is enough for uh, R to know that that's the, that's the base. Here I actually wrote out base equals, and of course I get the exact same thing. So I get all four numbers in the collection, one, two, three, four, and I get the log of each one of those as a another group of numbers. Now I want to take a collection of numbers, one, two, three, and four, but this time let's divide each one of those numbers by a sequence. So I'm gonna have four numbers in my sequence and I'm going to take each one of those four numbers and divide it into, sequentially, each one of the numbers in the collection. So I'm gonna go from two to eight, and this time let's use a step size of two. So I will be dividing 
those numbers into each of the numbers in the collection. Now let's look at what the sequence actually was and you'll see that in fact taking each one of the numbers in the sequence dividing them into 1, 2, 3, 4 will give you 0.5. So it's 2 to 8 by a step size of 2 gives you 2, 4, 6, 8. And divide those four numbers into 1, 2, 3, 4 you get 0.5 each time. 